In this uh, part four of uh, the module material science, we'll see uh, the definitions of uh, density of states, Fermi Dirac distribution, expression for Fermi energy, effective mass of electrons, and uh, merits and demerits of quantum free electron theory. Just to recap, uh, we started this module of uh, material science. Uh, with the material classification that is uh, insulators, semiconductors and uh, conductors. And then we started explaining about the basis of uh, free electron theory based on uh, the uh, electronic configuration and uh, periodic table. Then we looked into the assumptions of classical free electron theory, certain definitions and uh, relations of electrical uh, parameters. And finally, we discussed about uh, merits and demerits of uh, uh, classical free electron theory. After that, we had uh, uh, the assumptions for uh, quantum free electron theory. There again, we had some uh, definitions like uh, uh, Fermi factor, Fermi energy, uh, Fermi velocity, and Fermi temperature, and uh, significance of uh, uh, Fermi energy. Let us continue with the definitions related to quantum free electron theory. Uh, density of uh, states. Observe this uh, uh, energy level uh, diagram, uh, which is corresponding to the hydrogen. If we look at uh, uh, very close uh, to the uh, band of uh, band distribution, this is uh, the distribution of energy levels. These lines refer to the energy levels. These uh, all the lines are energy levels, which we, we have discussed uh, previously. You could refer back and. Uh, uh, you could see that the distribution is not at all uniform. Here it is uh, rarely uh, distributed. The, here the density is uh, uh, more at the higher uh, energy level. So that also, you know, as the, as we go up, that means the energy is also going to increase like this. Okay. And another thing is uh, the variation is not random. It means it is not that any value it is uh, occupying. Maybe it is not any value that it is occupying. There is not any value that it occupies. It occupies only a specific value, a discrete value, which we call it as a quantization. Okay, quantization of energy levels. So there exist several density of energy levels. And uh, since the energy value is applicable to two states in the electron, for example, a spin up and spin down states. That is why we just uh, call it as a density of states. In this slide, I am just uh, showing the same thing singly. You observe that uh, I have made three regions. Okay, Maybe I say that uh, here it is the region 1 or region 2 and uh, region 3 and they are of equal intervals. Okay, So these are all equal intervals that is there. And in the equal intervals, these equal intervals, you see that uh, the number of uh, density states, I mean, uh, the number of states which are uh, present here and number of states which are present in this gap is increases as you increase with the energy. Okay, so number or density of states in each interval of uh, equal width is different. Now, consider an uh, energy band in a material of uh, unit volume uh, spread between the energy uh, intervals E1 and uh, E2. Okay, so these are the two energy intervals that I'm uh, showing here. Uh, let E, that is uh, this part, the lower one, lower line here, let E uh, be an arbitrary energy and DE be the infinitesimally small. Uh, increment in E <clears throat> okay, uh, within this energy band. It means the energy between E and E plus DE, that means from E and E plus DE means uh, this range we are speaking now, uh, can be assumed as constant, can be assumed as constant. Hence, the number of uh, energy states in the range between E and DE here is obtained 
by multiplying the density of state with DE. Okay, density of state with D, DE. Okay, uh, so this uh, here also it is the uh, graphical uh, representation that we are uh, having uh, in this case. So here also the number of energy states uh, in an energy interval DE in an energy interval uh, DE is proportional to root E. Okay. Uh, the variation of uh, G of E uh, with E is uh, presented in this uh, figure. Okay. The shape is parabola. Okay. Density of state is defined as the number of available states per unit energy range centered at a given energy E in the valence band of a material of unit volume. Mathematically, it is a continuous function and product G of E DE gives the number of states in the energy interval DE at E. Okay, so that is what uh, we are having here. So by quantum mechanical calculation, uh, we don't have the calculation, but uh, I'm just going to give you the equation. G of E DE is equal to 8 root 2 pi into m to the power 3 by 2 divided by h cube into root e into de. This gives the number of available energy states in the interval e and e plus de. Okay, that means uh, broadly what this uh, equation means g of e de that directly depends on root of e or uh, uh, de is uh, directly depending on root E. Therefore, every solid material, the number of energy states available in the energy interval E and E plus DE are exactly according to the above equation. Okay. The density of states function changes with E in a band and uh, that considering a unit volume of the material. The number of energy levels in a range E and E plus DE is given by the product G of E into DE. So the Fermi Dirac distribution which is represented as N of E into DE. If N of E into DE is the number of electrons distributed only in the energy range E and E plus DE, it is the product of the, this is important, it is a product of the number of energy levels in the range DE and the Fermi factor F of E. So this Fermi factor F of E we have already seen earlier. So N of E DE is equal to G of E into DE into F of E. Okay, of course, uh, we know that uh, at uh, constant temperature, G of E and F of E, uh, that uh, depends on the energy E. And uh, therefore, N of E DE is also the function of E. Okay, so in this uh, equation. Okay, yeah, therefore, the information of distribution of electrons among the various allowed energy levels of a material under thermal control, thermal equilibrium conditions is referred as Fermi Dirac distribution. Let us get the expression now for Fermi energy at 0 Kelvin. Okay. Okay. Now as per our previous study, we know that Fermi Dirac distribution is N of E into D, that is number of electrons distributed only in the energy range E and E plus D that is given by this equation as we seen earlier. Okay, N of e DE is equal to DE is equal to G of E DE into F of E. That is, let it be equation 1. Okay, in this equation, we know that uh, G of E and F of E, both of them depend on energy. Okay, if N is the number of electrons per unit volume of the material, it can be obtained by integrating equation 1 uh, from E 
is equal to 0 to e maximum where e max is the maximum energy possessed by the electron therefore that n is equal to the integration from 0 to e max of n of e de into is equal to uh, integration from 0 to uh, e max of g of e f of e into de let it be equation 2 and now you assume at uh, uh, t is equal to 0 kelvin e less than e f then f of e is equal to 1 which we have already uh, seen in the temperature dependence of uh, f of e okay so that implies the equation reduces above the equation reduces to n is equal to integration of e 0 to e to e max of g of e de but g of e de is given by that equation also we have seen that is nothing but the density of uh, uh, states so g of e de is equal to 8 root 2 pi into m to the power 3 by 2 divided by h cube into e to the power half de let it be equation number 3 okay uh, where m is the mass of the electron and h is uh, uh, the Planck's constant so those are we need to note it down therefore if you simplify then n is equal to 8 root 2 pi e, uh, m to the power 3 by 2 divided by h cube of integration 0 to e max e to the power half into d okay in this slide initially we have uh, the first equation from the previous slide so that if you uh, uh, simplify means you need to solve this uh, integration then you are going to get it as 2 by 3 e to the power 3 by 2 of uh, 0 to e max okay and then at uh, 0 kelvin Fermi energy can be represented as uh, EF naught which I already know and uh, which is nothing but the maximum energy at that uh, maximum energy that an electron can attain at the absolute 0 kelvin okay hence E max is equal to is nothing but EF naught okay then let us uh, work out here uh, the first part is the same that is n is equal to 8 root 2 pi into m to the power 3 by 2 divided by h cube and uh, 2 by a 3 that we have it uh, from the above and uh, e to the power f sorry e f by e f naught to the power 3 by 2 same equation let us start in this slide also so now you see that e f naught a should get you should get what you should get e f naught okay so that is nothing but the Fermi energy at zero kelvin so that if you just rearrange this equation you are going to get the equation this e f naught is equal to h square by 8 m into 3 n by pi to the power 2 by 3 okay and uh, now if we just uh, consider because uh, h is a constant and m is also constant and 8 and 3 are uh, numbers and pi is also constant okay so now what is remaining the remaining is only n to the power 2 by 3 is remaining so that means other things are constant that is why I will just write the constant as a b. So where b is equal to this, that is s square by 8m divided by 3 by pi e to the power 2 by 3. Uh, and if you calculate that, you will get it as b, which uh, b, you will get it as 5.85 into 10 to the power minus 38 joules or 3.5 into 10 to the power 18 or sorry 19 electron volt uh, now let us see the expression for Fermi energy at uh, uh, higher uh, temperature I'm just uh, giving the equation here 
uh, EF that is EF is equal to EF naught. This EF naught is uh, firm energy at 0 Kelvin. Uh, EF naught into 1 minus pi square divided by 12 into KT by EF naught to the whole square. Okay. So above equation has the equation, I mean, significance only for higher temperature. It is not. Okay. Otherwise, at uh, ordinary temperature means uh, that is at very high temperature we are speaking about. At ordinary temperature, so we will be just uh, uh, using the equation, the previous equation itself, because E f is equal to E f naught. Whatever the equations we learned so far, we'll just I'm just uh, showing here. First one is the f of E equation for f of E as a Fermi factor, which is nothing but one over 1 plus e to the power e minus e f by k t. Next is uh, density of state we have seen. So that is also g of e into d e is equal to 8 root 2 pi into m to the power 3 by 2 divided by h cube into root e into d e. Okay. And uh, the next one is the number of electrons distributed only in the energy range when we discussed density of states we have seen that one so that is nothing but n of e d e is equal to uh, g of e d e into f of e later the expression for fermi energy at uh, 0 kelvin we have seen just in the a previous uh, slide uh, e f naught is equal to h square by 8 m into 3 n by pi uh, uh, in, uh, to the power 2 by 3 then at uh, higher temperature the expression also we have given and you should remember that all this equation i have just given because in your syllabus you don't have the derivation ef is equal to ef naught into 1 minus pi square by 12 into kt by ef naught whole square let us look into the next concept that is uh, effective mass of uh, electron which is represented as uh, m star uh, an electron has a definite uh, mass which we call as a rest mass and all of us know that it is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kilograms. However, when accelerated by an electric field, it obeys Newtonian mechanics. Okay, uh, So, uh, it moves under the combined effect of uh, applied field and that of the periodic potential due to lattice ions. Therefore, the mass of an electron in a crystal appears in general different from the free electron mass or the rest mass. Okay, And it is usually referred as elect effective mass and uh, represented as uh, m star. Okay, m star. Okay, yes. And uh, M star can be sometimes uh, greater or smaller than our uh, rest mass M or sometimes it could be negative also. So, uh, the electrons may move in the direction of the applied field referred as force. So, this uh, significance of uh, uh, effective mass is very important when we uh, do, it, uh, do, it experiment, uh, do it experimentally, we will come to know about the existence of holes also. So the equation what we have learnt uh, previously sigma is equal to n square tau by m you have learnt earlier which is going to be rewritten as n square lambda by m star p f because tau I am replacing. Okay, I am replacing tau. So where uh, you know all these uh, parameters n is uh, the number of uh, electrons per unit volume he is a charge uh, sigma i mean lambda is the wavelength of the electron and uh, effective mass m star and vf not pf is equal to fermi velocity okay and then just the reciprocal of uh, uh, conductivity which is nothing but the resistivity so that is uh, sigma you will be i will be writing it as a, a rho for uh, resistivity and uh, m star v f is uh, uh, divided by n e square lambda. So let us see one more significance here of quantum free electron theory. 
So wherein the movement of electrons is considered as passage of matter waves in a periodic lattice. That is why we are having the lambda or the wavelength. wavelength okay. So oh, in a perfect uh, crystal, this lambda could be uh, infinity because arrangement of atoms in a lattice is going to be very very uniform and uh, that is why lambda could be infinity. However, in real crystals it is not so. Uh, there will be always uh, uh, some uh, defects will be uh, present such as uh, vacancies, dislocations or presence of impurities, grain boundaries etc. which will act as the scattering centers okay, and uh, that will cause the resistivity. In this table I am uh, giving some uh, uh, values and you observe uh, this one that is m star by m so that is nothing but uh, 1.2 for lithium for copper it is 1.01 for uh, gold it is 1 means what uh, rest mass is equal to effective mass okay so for aluminium it is uh, uh, 0.97 and for silver it is 0.99 now let us uh, just uh, see merits of uh, quantum free electron theory just two which is present in your uh, uh, syllabus temperature dependence of uh, electrical conductivity and uh, dependence of electrical conductivity of uh, electron concentration which is uh, uh, proved to be a not correct in the case of uh, classical free electron theory that was uh, uh, two of the uh, failures of or drawbacks of uh, uh, quasi, sorry, uh, classical free electron theory. Now, let us uh, look into it, uh, what it is, temperature dependence of electrical resistivity, first one. So in uh, CFET, what we uh, had is uh, sigma is uh, uh, inversely proportional to root T, but by experiment it has found that uh, it is just uh, uh, inversely proportional to T. In the case of quantum free electron theory, we know that sigma is equal to n square, to n square uh, uh, lambda by m star uh, uh, Vf, where in the equation only lambda depends on temperature. Okay, Lambda means what? Lambda means wavelength of the electron. That is the only thing which depends on temperature okay otherwise this uh, n is a constant e is a constant vf is a velocity and uh, uh, m is a constant for a given uh, element or for a given material okay so as the temperature is increased you see that as the temperature is increased lattice ion starts vibrating with larger amplitude means more and more vibrations will be there so that will affect the periodicity of the lattice. Thus, while electrons travel in the form of a matter wave, reduces the mean free path leading to the increase in the resistivity. Okay, so that means you see that lambda is inversely proportional to temperature. So which means sigma is inversely proportional to temperature. So that means uh, which uh, was not uh, satisfactorily explained by a classical free electron theory. Now with the quantum free electron theory that is explained very well and that is one of the success of quantum free electron theory. Next let us see the dependence of uh, electrical conductivity on uh, electron concentration. So we are having the electron concentration of uh, aluminium as uh, 18.06 and that of uh, copper is uh, this is uh, smaller but conductivity of copper is greater than that of the aluminium okay let us try to explain on the basis of quantum free electron theory in quantum free electron theory we have sigma is equal to n square by m star into lambda by vf uh, uh, then although this is uh, uh, directly proportional we could see that uh, sigma is directly proportional to n and uh, uh, nl uh, is that is number of aluminium 
uh, atoms uh, is more than double that of the copper. But if you consider in the same equation, lambda by Vf, that if you calculate, the value of copper is almost four times or 3.86 times greater than that of the aluminum. So in the equation, the resultant uh, equation is that uh, sigma for copper will be greater than that of the aluminum. Okay, that's all uh, we have to learn in uh, quantum free electron theory. Let us just compare the quantum free electron theory and the classical free electron theory with respect to the assumptions. With respect to assumptions, we have uh, seen that uh, where in both the cases, uh, free electrons uh, are assumed and they travel in a constant potential. So both of them are uh, having that. Okay. Now, uh, in the case of attraction, in both the cases, attraction between the free electron and the ion core and uh, repulsion between the two electrons are insignificant. That is also is uh, same in uh, both the cases. But in the third one, the energy value for free electrons in the case of CFET is continuous. But in the case of quantum free electron theory, it is discrete. Okay. The distribution of electrons in various allowed energy levels is uh, maybe uniform in the case of uh, classical free electron theory and in Pauli's exclusion principle uh, is considered in the case of quantum free electron theory. Okay. The pattern of distribution of uh, energy among the free electron, that is the statistics, if we consider in uh, classical free electron theory, it is uh, Maxwell-Boltzmann. In the case of uh, uh, quantum free electron theory, it is the Fermi Dirac statistics. So although there were uh, success in uh, classical, uh, I mean quantum free electron theory, there were some failures also. So I'm just uh, listing here two. So the questions are, why some crystals are uh, metal, have metallic properties and others don't? And second one is, why atomic ray in uh, crystals should prefer certain structures? Structures. Okay. Uh, these and other facts have been uh, uh, explained uh, further in uh, band theory of uh, and uh, quantum physics. Uh, which again you don't have in your uh, syllabus.